Hello everyone, welcome back to Microbio Solutions. Today we are going to discuss about the general properties of viruses, their structural symmetry and the basic nature of the virus. Before moving on to the general properties, we shall see what is meant by virology or the definition for virology. So it is the bioscience for the study of the nature of the virus or the structure of the virus and the relationship of the virus between the host. So the host can be either animal or it can be human. So but we will be mainly focusing on the human host and the medically important viruses. So virology is a study of the nature of the virus and the relationship of the virus between the host or how the virus is interacting inside the host body. And the definition of virus that it can be defined as a cellular organism which does not have a proper cellular organization whose genomes consist of nucleic acid. Okay? The genetic material of the virus consists of nucleic acid which can be either DNA or RNA. The genetic material of a virus can be either DNA or RNA but never DNA and RNA together. And the nucleic acid or the virus which can replicate only inside the host cell which means independently it cannot multiply. The multiplication of virus is called as the replication. So it can obligately replicate inside the host cell. Without a host, a virus cannot replicate because it uses certain enzymes and the metabolic machineries of host for its multiplication and after the end of this multiplication or replication which assemble into a particle that complete infective form of the virus is called as virion. We shall see the general properties of viruses now. As I have told, they are obligate intracellular parasite. They are seen inside the cells and associated with the human host. They are strict intracellular parasite and they cannot make energy or proteins independent of host cell. So in order to initiate an infection in a host, they need to gain attachment with the host cell. Then only it can replicate inside the host cell and initiate the infection as it uses the proteins and energy or the metabolic machineries from the host cell for its replication. And the genetic material or the nucleic acid of the virus contains RNA or DNA but not both. Unlike the bacteria as it has both RNA and DNA together where the virus is not having RNA and DNA together. There can be RNA viruses or there can be DNA viruses. Also, these viruses lack enzymes that are necessary for protein and nucleic acid synthesis. Thus, it takes help from the host cell for the synthesis of proteins and nucleic acid. And the viruses do not have the genetic capability to multiply by division. Division is a multiplication process of the bacteria. Virus replicate or viruses multiply by a complicated process called as viral replication. And here in this table, we will be able to see the different properties of bacteria and viruses. How bacteria are differentiated from viruses. Based on the cellular organization, bacteria are cellular organisms wherein viruses does not have a proper cellular organization. So, it is a acellular organism. Bacteria has a proper cell wall or a proper cellular organization whereas viruses lack a cellular organization. And bacteria 
can be grown on an inanimate media in the laboratories where we cannot culture the virus inside the laboratory on an inanimate media and bacteria replicate by binary fission and the viruses replicate by viral replication they cannot replicate by binary fission bacteria contains both rna and dna where virus contain either dna or rna and bacteria has ribosome viruses lack ribosome and bacteria are sensitive to antibiotics where the viruses are not the only difference that vice versa that you are seeing with virus and bacteria is its sensitivity to interferons bacteria are not sensitive to interferon wherein viruses are sensitive to interferons so these are the differentiating features between a bacteria and viruses now we will see what is meant by medically important viruses so this viruses are not to cause infections in human host so such group of viruses have been called as medically important viruses the viral diseases or the diseases caused by this kind of viruses range from minor ailments such as common cold to the terrifying diseases such as rabies or aids viruses can cause minor diseases to a major terrifying disease and they can be sporadic like mumps endemic like infectious hepatitis epidemic like dengue fever or pandemic like as you all know now coronavirus or influenza virus and they may be localized to circumscribed areas localized infection means in case of some arboviral infection and it can be a worldwide or it can be a circumscribed infection in case of a herpes simplex virus viruses can cause cancer in animals and birds as well as in humans the only human carcinoma which is vaccine preventable is hepatocellular carcinoma which is caused by hepatitis virus so we'll see the morphology of the virus the size of the virus varies from 20 to 400 nanometer so how are we identifying the size of this virus there are few methods of analyzing the size of viral particle they are passing the virus or passing the preparation of the virus through colloidal membrane filters of graded porosity because of this graded porosity it will show that the filters will filter the virus according to the size and the size can be calculated next is by ultra centrifugation we we'll see the rate of sedimentation and classify the virus next through electron microscopy and the fourth one or the last one is by using x ray crystallography and the smallest virus which is not to cause infection in human is about 20 nanometer that is a parvo virus and the largest virus have a diameter of 400 nanometer the example is pox virus so the smallest virus that cause infection in human is a parvo virus and the largest virus is pox virus and in this picture you will be able to clearly appreciate the difference between or the difference of size between the bacteria and the virus so here this is the staphylococcus aureus bacterium you can see how big the bacterium is when compared to the virus on the right hand side here you are seeing a pox virus we have seen that it is the largest virus of causing infection in humans we will be able to make out the difference between the largest virus as well as the bacterium and these are the other classes of virus including herpes virus influenza virus and picorna virus so you will be able to see that how big a bacterium is when compared to a virus so a bacterium is be able to see through a light microscope where 
uh, virus we are not able to see through a light microscope because of its tiny size the size of the bacteria is in microns and size of virus is in nanometers and the structure of the virus how the virus is structurally arranged it has got a genetic material we have seen that it has either dna or rna so the genetic material of the virus is either dna or rna the dna and rna can be single stranded or double stranded and can be arranged in a circular or linear manner if it is a single stranded dna or rna we represent it as ss dna or rna if it is double stranded we represent it as ds dna or ds rna and the genetic material is covered by a covering called as capsid which is a protein called covering the genome and this capsid are made up of structural units of proteins called as capsomeres so capsids are made up of capsomeres they are the structural units consisting of several protein this capsid provides the structural symmetry to the virus the symmetry or the structure of the virus is mediated by the presence of capsid or by the arrangement of capsid also it participates in attachment of the virus to the susceptible host and thereby facilitating the transfer of viral nucleic acid into a host cell so that the infection can be initiated also this capsid protects the viral nucleic acid from the nucleases in blood stream nucleases are the enzymes which are commonly seen in blood stream which can kill the nucleic acid of the virus nucleases means which can kill the nucleic acid so because the nucleic acid is covered with capsid it is giving protection to the genetic material from these nucleases and in some viruses there is a lipoprotein covering surrounding the capsid this is called as a envelope the envelope is made up of a material which is of host cell origin and as well as of viral origin which is a lipoprotein layer which contains material from the host cell as well as from the viral origin and the virus encoded glycoproteins are exposed on the surface of the envelope in enveloped viruses and most of the helical viruses are enveloped virus and the icosahedral are enveloped or non enveloped viruses and the genetic material plus capsid is called as a nucleocapsid that is the protein and nucleic acid complex together called as a nucleocapsid and the complete infective virus particle is called as a virion other viral proteins seen in the virus includes the outer viral protein they are antigenic and they can induce neutralizing antibodies thus it will activate the cytotoxic t cell to kill the virus infected cells this occurs in natural infection and immunization this is the basis of immunization and some virus proteins act as super antigens super antigens are a class of antigens which can cause non specific activation of t cell okay which will cause the non specific activation of t cell and thereby there will be polyclonal activation of t cell and when the t cell is activated it will release cytokines and the super antigens are produced by some pathogenic viruses as well as bacteria most likely as a defense mechanism against the immune system so that the virus and bacteria can survive in the system examples are ebv and cmv epstein barr virus and cytomegalo virus so here in this picture you can see the complete structure of a virus at the center you are seeing the genetic material or the viral genome covering that there is a capsid the individual round like structures are called as the capsomeres which is contributing to a capsid and covering the capsid there is an envelope which is a lipoprotein layer and upon the envelope there are the envelope 
proteins or glycoprotein which helps the virus in gaining attachment to the host cell and the significance of envelope enveloped viruses are more unstable okay because they are more sensitive to heat drying detergents and alcohols all the viruses transmitted by feco oral route like hepatitis a virus polio virus rotavirus are non enveloped because the enveloped viruses are sensitive to heat drying detergents and alcohols since this non enveloped viruses which are transmitting via feco oral route has to survive in the environment for longer period in order to transfer from one individual to another individual so that it is not enveloped this it will be more stable and enveloped virus infections are often transmitted by direct contact by blood sexual contact like hiv hepatitis b hepatitis c rabies virus missiles mumps rubella etc so remember the non enveloped viruses are transmitted mainly via feco oral route as the virus has to survive in the environment and the enveloped viruses are often transmitted by direct contact by blood or by sexual contact this is about today's class if you have any queries please post it in the comment section and please do like share and subscribe our channel